Hey, Clint. Ted. So I'm Ted. America. Good morning. You're America. Well, good morning to America, except California. Yeah. Other words for you. Today we're going to be talking about truck guns. Uh, should you have one? Not necessarily like politically do you have the right to, but mm -hmm. more so comparing firearm theft rates to defensive uses, crime rates, how often situations arise that you might use it. Mm. Um, in the end, through this research, we pretty much determined absolutely nothing. Just determine it on your own. But um, <laughs> so, so turn the video off now and don't <laughs> even watch it. It's yep. worthless. Yep. Just go ahead. Just go ahead and put in your your ten five, your eleven five, three hundred blackout, whatever you're running. Where you no. So based on an mm. NPR study, um, as trustworthy as they are, but these are actually reported from the police departments. In terms of firearms stolen from vehicles mm -hmm. per X number of people, um, there's Memphis, Nashville, Atlanta, and St. Louis replied. Stolen. So Memphis, one firearm is stolen per 511 people, and that's just from vehicles, according to the police department. Nashville, one per 1,050 people. Um, so about half the rate are being stolen in Nashville compared to Memphis. Atlanta is one per 487 and St. Louis is one per 532 people. So that averages out to where one firearm is stolen from a vehicle per 688 people, at least in these four larger metropolitan mm -hmm. cities. Which um, brings you to the topic of, when we're discussing statistics like this, and you're trying to compare them to yourself, you know, where, where do you live at? You know, do you live in a city you know, mm -hmm. similar to these, right? And uh, we don't have the informa information for it within the study. But the other thing is, where do you live within the city? Of course, living in the county, these will be much lower crime rates in any county versus uh, especially a big city. So just to get an idea, so one firearm stolen per 688 people, mm -hmm. just from vehicles. Um, there's also one homicide per 20,000 people. So statistically speaking, you're about 30 times more likely to have a firearm stolen from your vehicle than you are to be murdered. Um, that being said, there's far more situations mm. that you would need a firearm other than I'm going to die. You mm. know, it could just be robber, or burglary, anything like that. And, and those are homicide statistics, so it's not including just somebody getting shot. Uh, within those homicides, at minimum, you're looking... 50 60 percent plus are either gang or drug related there's potentially more that mm -hmm. people were honest about and uh, so that brings us to a big thing of you know what are you doing daily if, if you're not within illegal drug deals or gang you substantially cut this risk down yep. of your opportunity of getting killed so other than just homicides just looking at firearm incidents in general because so this could be someone was shot at this could be mm -hmm. someone was injured um, you're looking at 465,000 firearm incidents per year mm -hmm. um, roughly which is about one incident per 755 people. And if you include the homicides, it's one per 731. So just to just to remind you, there was one firearm stolen per 688 people, and there's one firearm incident per 731 people. So that's near about a one-to-one -one ratio. Close, yeah. Then you've also got knife crime, mm -hmm. vehicular assaults. You've also just got straight up aggravated assaults where people are just yeah. Beating each other with nothing but you know, yeah, fists. I mean, headbutts and meth strength. Yeah, catching a fade. So it's it's starting to lean in the favor where you might want to keep one on you. All right. So now now that we're kind of mm -hmm. leaning in the favor of where you might keep a gun on you, mm -hmm. just depending on where you live or not on you, you're gonna keep one on you. You should. Uh, but in your vehicle, um, yeah. another reason people, you know, they'll keep their level three plus or their special mm -hmm. threats or level four ceramics in the car, and they'll have it loaded up with, you know, three mags and their IFAC, yeah. and they'll, you know run a 10 5 10 3 mm -hmm. you know 14 7 ar or something in the back specifically for active shooter situations yeah. which absolutely happened you got um they do, yeah they, they happen what sandy hook on that one was it was that stop oh you're saying was it stopped by yeah, yeah. what was the one that just happened that was uh, um white settlement mm -hmm. jack something oh well, you want the texas the fud yeah yeah, yeah. oh i forgot his last sig, name sig 229 or two yeah, yeah. Was it 357 it's, it's, sig brought it back from the grave yep, yep. yeah dropped it from 25 feet i want to say jack that, ryan that but said, that's a movie not a truck gun not a truck gun then you've also got body. another one stopped mm -hmm. by a citizen uh sutherland springs mm -hmm. stephen williford okay he actually yeah. went on crowder show stephen williford nice he was the neighbor of the church also mm -hmm. not a truck gun but that being said one of those parishioners had had a truck gun. Mm -hmm. Maybe it could have been stopped by them as well. So there's these situations mm -hmm. where 
there's not evidence that a truck gun was used to stop it, but mm-hmm. there's evidence that a personally owned mm-hmm. firearm of an AR or a handgun in these two situations mm-hmm. were used to stop it. And had someone had a truck gun, they might have stopped it earlier. So you can yeah. see there's valid situations in which a citizen stops mm-hmm. uh, active shooter situations. It's just... Mm-hmm. So the number of active shooters in the last... I think it was since 2002. So I calculated it as 18 years. That'd actually be 19 years. Mm-hmm. But uh, assuming it was 18 years, I'm not going to redo the calculations. It would be 135 casualties per year. That's not deaths. That's casualties. Mm-hmm. As far as deaths, it's 49 per year. And 85 of those casualties were wounded. As far as per capita, what that is. So, you know, you have about a 1 in 700 if you're in one of these cities mm-hmm. to have your firearm stolen. The likelihood that you're going to be a casualty, not a death, a casualty in an mm-hmm. active shooter in the last 19 years, mm-hmm. one casualty per 2.51 million people from an super active shooter. Low. So super, super, super low. Super low likelihood. So yeah. absolutely, Stephen mm-hmm. Williford and Jack, Does 357 SIG guy, absolute heroes. Yeah, It's amazing they had firearms on them mm-hmm. and they were able to use them to save lives. That's a good thing to put. Mm-hmm. Which one of truck guns here, but keep one on you. Which I'm sure if you're looking into the truck gun video, mm-hmm. you probably have one on you. But yeah. first things first, carry them with you everywhere you go yeah. to get to your truck gun mm-hmm. if you want to use it. But yeah. And then we're talking about, of course, so where do you where do you live at? You know, if you're mm-hmm. living in, in the city, yep. um, there's different sections of the city. If you live in an apartment complex, you're far more likely to have some sort of a ve- a vehicle crimes happen more so there because there's more vehicles to happen at. Uh, Nothing Fancy mentioned it in a video, and I wish I could remember which city it was, where there was uh, sort of two crews that were going through uh, these parking lots, one of which would uh, try to identify trucks or mm-hmm. you know vehicles that would be more likely, that they would they would believe would be more likely to have a mm-hmm. firearm in them, whether it was yeah. a Ram 2500 with you know an Army 1775 sticker, USMC, mm-hmm. whatever, NRA stickers, mm-hmm. uh, a Glock sticker, bra- Browning <laughs> for that. A lot of stickers. Yeah. Um, you've also got things that you can see just in plain mm-hmm. view, whether that be like you know knives, shell casings from hunting, mm-hmm. anything like that. Orange hats. Yeah. Um, anything like that, they would go through, and the first crew would just put a reflective sticker that wasn't really that noticeable, and they just put them on the bumpers, and they mm-hmm. w- they wouldn't do anything else. So if anything happened, they're just right. tagging vehicles. Yeah. Probably nothing. Probably not even gonna get charged. Mm-hmm. Second crew would come through. Just dull little flashlight would see which cars have reflectors. They'd either smash a window or mm-hmm. test the handle somehow, get inside, and they'd rummage through it. And yeah. you know, if they hit mm-hmm. eight, nine vehicles that are like that, there's a good chance at least one of them's going to have a gun. Yeah. Um, so as, to avoid that. Yeah, definitely avoid that. Um, the way the way we can avoid that is going to be gray man. Gray man. And not people say gray man. They it's never cringy. really do it. It's cringy. It's cringy. It's, the term's cringy, but I mean, don't put stickers. Cargo on your pants. Yeah. Cargo pants. Probably a no-no. Probably a no. If they, if they see you get out of your car yeah. and you're rocking this kind of guy that says, hey, yeah. I carry a gun. You're supposed to go to the range today. I yeah. do not wear cargo pants. No. Yeah. I mean, but then your vehicle. What? Oh, well, you got like randomly. the third, what, the third or fifth pocket see it, or whatever. You can't see it. Okay. Randomly. Well, you can when you got a clip hanging out of it. You have a clip Okay. On it? Okay. Yeah. Fair. Okay. All right. But vehicle-wise, yeah, vehicle no wise. sticker. No sticker on your vehicle. Or stickers that don't get burned. Don't elude. Bernie, definitely. The the, the blue one with the yellow equal equal rights one. That's a good yeah. one. People would just typically assume Coexist. you're a twenty year old female or dude with a man bun. You know, no offense to those of you with man buns. Getting a college education kind of thing. You know, if you want to put a the coexist mm-hmm. with all the different those religion emblems. Yeah, or just a peace um, sign. Another option to more expensive, not as easy, just hiding stuff away and no stickers. Window tint is mm-hmm. decent uh, with your state's legal, uh, whatever the laws are. And then a, a second thing to do, is the less light you have in, the better. So if you tint your windows and then also get the sunshade, the sun visor for the front windshield, mm-hmm. you have much less light coming in. It's much harder to see in the vehicle mm-hmm. if you do have items in there. Or say, if, uh, to look under, this is much easier. If they have still a flashlight look in, but it's much more challenging if you have window tint and a sunshade for them to see in your vehicle. So that's another thing you can do to protect yourself. Mm-hmm. Which also goes now to securing, if you do yep. have one in your vehicle, you have a truck gun, and one on you first, securing that truck gun would prevent. Yep, you can well. take, I don't know if it's 3 eighths or 5 eighths, what I use, you can use cable locks, run mm-hmm. it through the trigger guard. Um, if it's a small enough one, if you're using like a quarter inch cable, you could probably run it through the magwell and through yeah. the ejection port, lock it to itself. 
Um, there's various things you can you can actually run multiple cable locks. Just do one to the trigger guard, one through mm -hmm. the action if you want to. Yeah. Just any way that you can secure it. Which granted, they can still be defeated. Yeah. Uh, with a set of bolt cutters, yep. you harbor freight, and these guys are probably gonna have that. However, it, it, if they're just smash and grab, it takes a lot more time mm -hmm. now to do that. So they're running the risk of time. Maybe they don't have that tool on them. Either mm -hmm. way. Especially, secure it for sure. Especially if you have something like F-150 Silverado mm -hmm. of a common year that's, mm -hmm. you know, not like brand spanking new. There's mm -hmm. probably, I don't know, is it Rhino safes? Oh, uh, they're, Gun Vault? Maybe Gun Vault. Gun where Vault. They're, they're, they're custom company. fitted almost yeah. almost like the same way that gas tanks can mm -hmm. be custom fitted to, you know, like an overlanding rig. Mm -hmm. There's guns or just safes in general. They're not necessarily guns, but they're mm -hmm. for guns. There's safes that are specifically mm -hmm. designed to fit under the seat of your vehicle and mm -hmm. mount to the floorboard super. Or in the console, they're way better yeah. than a cable lock, but Absolutely. if you're in a Honda Civic and there's no easy way to mm -hmm. have like a, an actual safe in the car, it's cable off. lock's the next, next mm -hmm. best thing. Um, yeah. Most of the time that it's gonna get stolen, it's gonna be at night when you're not at your mm -hmm. vehicle for a 10 hour period or so while you're mm -hmm. inside and then you go to bed and waking up getting ready in the morning. That's mm -hmm. when it's most likely to happen yeah. probably probably one, two, three a.m. somewhere in there. So just take it out at night. You know, if you have, you know, a nondescript bag that kind of looks like a tennis mm -hmm. racket case that's just a little longer, or yeah. even if you're just uh, carrying it in a book bag broken mm -hmm. down, um, if if the need arises, there's some mm -hmm. sort of active shooter, you can put the upper and lower together, pinch it. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming you have an AR, that's just what I have. If you have a handgun as your truck gun, I'm thinking just carry it on you. Most and if you have like a pistol caliber carbine, it's pretty much the same as the AR. Okay. It'll probably be smaller because most yeah. pistol caliber carbines, they don't have the uh, like the functional bu buffer tube. Mm -hmm. Usually they'll have some sort of, you know, buffer bolt system that's kind of combined in the receiver. Mm -hmm. Maybe not an AR-9, but if you have an AR-9, what, whatever. Get an AR. They get the idea. Um, get the idea. Yeah. <laughs> so just, just take it out of your car. If you're going to have it in your car, have it very secured. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're in an area where you don't think you mm -hmm. need it and you're pretty comfortable, you know, rocking the Glock 19 mm -hmm. with the spare, and then you got an EDC bag mm -hmm. with a 27 round mag and level 3A mm -hmm. soft armor, and you're like, hey, I really don't need a truck gun, mm -hmm. that's kind of where I found myself. Mm -hmm. You can still just throw in a nondescript bag mm -hmm. to have a truck gun if you're going on vacation yeah. or if you know you're going to be at a friend's house for a few days or if you know you're going to be out in the deer woods kind of mm -hmm. thing. And you just want something to be your temporary home defense option because mm -hmm. that's all that's all really happens for me is my home yeah. defense becomes my home defense elsewhere and intermediate mm -hmm. it becomes that truck gun uh, you can mm -hmm. you can do that i mean you don't have yeah. to always have a truck gun and you don't have to never have a truck gun mm -hmm. you just, have to, you just have to look at the situation and mm -hmm. how secure is it going to be is it going to end up in the hands of someone else mm -hmm. and is can i still get to it and use it yeah I'm in the same boat myself now. I, before, I always carried a truck on with me, and then learning the statistics, uh, what could happen potentially. Um, you know, I got a shot away from it now. Mm -hmm. Plus, the idea is most gunfights are three seconds, three rounds, so three meters, they say. Um, and the statistics of getting a gun, a firearm engagement, you're most likely going to use a firearm that you have on you if you have it on you. Before, I mean, the pistol be mm -hmm. to get to the truck gun, but most likely you're going to be using your pistol first. So I've Another thing is getting comfortable with it. You know, how good are you with your firearm? Mm -hmm. If you can hit the shots with a Glock 19 at like 60 yards and you carry one on you with a spare mag and a ADC bag as well, mm -hmm. the likelihood of using your truck on goes down even farther. Mm -hmm. However, speaking of like going out of town at a friend's house, it's really comfortable to have an AR with you. So I'm gonna have one with me at those occasions, but not every day. Um, you know, living at home, you're, where I live, I'm pretty comfortable with a firearm, but you're talking about, like you said, where do you work, where do you go? So come with you all the time, even like a Walmart, um, you just never know. And the so. reason I'm getting away from a truck gun is because if I'm in a church, if I'm you know attending service, if I'm mm -hmm. at some sort of place of business or a restaurant and it starts getting shot, I'm not gonna leave the business mm -hmm. and then re-enter because the number one concern yeah. is just getting out of danger. Yep. So I'm not gonna go back into it. Mm -hmm. Especially because when you're talking about delayed time, you then got to consider first responders are mm -hmm. going to start getting there and you're going to be yep. the guy with the gun at an active shooter yep. scene. Probably not going to end up well. I would rather just either address the threat while mm -hmm. I'm in there because oh, if, if, if it's not enough to have 15 rounds mm -hmm. plus 17 rounds yep. plus 25, 27 in your EDC bag or 33 if you have mm -hmm. a big stick plus level 3A armor that goes mm -hmm. collarbone to belt... 
I don't know what else kind of an AR at is going to do, you know. So, yeah. and then that's the other thing to talk about. Uh, before I had this, you know, had this mentality. I think a lot of guys get into when they're in the same uh, what this industry or hobby or this mindset, right? Industry. They, this hero mindset, which is great to have. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying, but hey, I'm gonna go to the truck, gun it, and then come back. Um, for one, for me personally, I'm either gonna if the threat needs to be handled then, and I can, I'm gonna handle the threat immediately. Uh, if not, the concern not us gr- growing up and older. Now, if you have a family, a wife, or kid, instead of going back and being a hero and trying to stop it. But my first priority is to protect your family, right? Mm-hmm. Or my family. And you can't protect them if you relinquish that duty to go handle this other threat. Mm-hmm. Grant as much as you want to stop it. If you're thinking, like I said, first responders on the way, number of priorities, get your family safe, secure, and get out of there. Mm-hmm. If you can handle the threat in the meantime as well, fantastic. But if not, I'm not going to go to the truck and come back. And if you are going to handle the threat, most likely it's what you have on your person at that time. Yeah. So. And the reason we take it so serious is because firearms being stolen have real consequences. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of people will just think, oh, I'll throw a kel P11 in there because I got it for 200 bucks, mm-hmm. and if it gets stolen, I'm out 200 bucks, so well, I'm not out 500 just, for a Glock. Just thinking of the monetary. An and it's yeah. like, you have situations, you know, you have mm-hmm. Henderson County, was it Ryan Hendricks? Mm-hmm. Uh, North, he, Henderson, he, North Carolina. Yeah, he's mm-hmm. a deputy that was responding in Henderson mm-hmm. County. There was a, um, I forget what the initial was. I think, the was, call. Um, I think they the, were, the homeowner, someone was going mm-hmm. through their car, and uh, he knew that he had a weapon in the car, and mm-hmm. he, he had already called police uh, when he saw him rummaging. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was actually gunfire exchange between the two where the suspect had taken the firearm out of the center console of the vehicle, mm-hmm. which I believe the vehicle was unsecured, not mm-hmm. locked, and then the center console is not locked either, and the firearm is stored in there with ammunition, completely unsecured. Could have been avoided. So shots times. were exchanged. No one was hurt, but mm-hmm. police, uh, the deputies arrived on scene, Shots were exchanged. Mm-hmm. Um, both the suspect and one deputy were killed. He was uh, shot in the face. Um, I believe another deputy was there. They didn't shoot each other. Uh, the mm-hmm. deputy was shot, and then the other mm-hmm. deputy put down the suspect. But people die because firearms yeah. get taken. It's it, not just a monetary yeah, It's not just a monetary yeah. value. So take that into consideration. Um, if you have you know, Ford Transit, you're doing like an Overlander rig, or you have some sort mm-hmm. of truck where you can get that safe under... And you have a way mm-hmm. to one hundred percent secure that, like it's like it's secured in mm-hmm. your Rhino safe in your house. Mm-hmm. Go for it. If if you're in a safe area and you're always close to your vehicle, you're not going to leave it for any extended mm-hmm. period of time. Go for it because you could be that one in two point yeah. five million. Yeah. You could be that one in one point five million if you're in the last eight years with active shooters. Mm-hmm. You could be the one in twenty thousand that's going to get homicided, and that could, <laughs> that gun could be the difference. If, yeah. Especially if you're. 18, 19, and you mm-hmm. don't have the capability to oh, conceal carry in your state. No. It could be life or death for a lot of people, mm-hmm. uh, but it could also be life and death if it gets stolen. Mm-hmm. And if you think uh, about the ones that get stolen, that's how majority of criminals that have firearms, they come from being being stolen. That's where majority of them come yep. from. There's also straw purchases, but majority of criminals that have firearms also got cartels. were stolen. Yeah, our, our yeah. cartels and ghost guns that are coming in. At the very least, but, write down serial numbers. A lot of guys, when law enforcement first gets there, and they're trying to ask the serial number for later on, they put it in a national database. If somebody ever comes across it again, they could connect it back to that. Granted, the serial number could be filed off. However, um, one thing I do in general, and I think a lot of people do as well, make yourself a Google Drive and get an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. So the red is either sold Perfect. or traded, so I can keep count of Very nice. what goes where, and then I've mm-hmm. even got my NFA items. So if there's anything you can do. Oh, I forgot I even had a... I had a Glock 22 Gen 3 RTF2 back in the day. Mm. Oh, that was I was running it like a Glock 17. Forgot. But I remember that now. And if anyone needs to know the serial number. You've got it. I've got it. And it was traded. But yeah. That and I could go back in my emails mm-hmm. and find out who I traded it to. Yeah. And now you know. You can give it to law enforcement. If it ever comes up again, they can connect it. And you can get a firearm back. You could get yeah. your firearm back. Yeah. Uh, but more importantly, they could connect it being stolen versus they come across it. And then it's just a random farm on the street. I have no idea if it's stolen or not. And hopefully that, that guilt led led to you getting some sort of knowledge from it. And hey, I better secure it the next time. Mm-hmm. And hopefully it didn't lead to anything. Hopefully it was just recovered in yeah. a traffic stop or it was found in mm-hmm. a Sam's Club bathroom. Uh, anything like that. For sure. It happens. Um, I guess it could. Yeah. Possible. A, work, a work truck at a landscaping company. It happens. Mm-hmm. It does happen. Yeah. All right. Um, well, basically, we're leaving it to you now. I mean, it's yeah. your choice. What, what so, we need to do. If you need a truck gun, mm, yeah. we will be doing 
a relatively in-depth yeah. video comparing guns eventually. 10 fives, 11 fives, yeah. 300 blackouts, suppressed, unsuppressed, do? Glock 19, various weapon lights. Yeah, I don't have PCC. Really? I sold mine. I don't either. But we could talk about them. We yeah, know we about them. We had one. We have yeah. experience with yeah. them. Yeah. We have you experience. Know. We sold them for a reason. But we'll have an in-depth video. Um, yeah. Check us out. You're watching us on yeah. Meaning of Man on mm -hmm. YouTube. We are The Meaning of Man on Instagram. On the uh, a lot of aesthetic aesthetic pictures yeah, will be going on there. Yeah, if you um, want to fill your feet with good aesthetic guns. You'll see our wooden floors, whether it be in my apartment or his house. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know how to describe these floors, but... Check us out. They're gorgeous. You want to see our floors. We'll include a gun in there, but you really want to see our floors. Or if he's trying to fly through TSA mm -hmm. with it, anything like that. You, you, man, that coffee is, I'm slightly strong. It's like pictures like that. You can't get this any, this kind of content anywhere else. Um, cobwebs, wow, that's gross. You don't yeah. clean your feelings. I don't even know how to describe it. Like it's thick, dusty, disgusting. Where's that one even? Where's the I base of it? That's a good question. It's thick. Like good the grinds good. dry out your tongue. Yeah. And I completely lost my train of thought. Sorry. That burp was like. Mm. It's a ghost, actually. It's a ghost. But yeah, so meaning of man. There's been plenty more. Did the previous owner shoot through your ceiling? Where were we at? Oh, guns. I was talking something about serial numbers. Oh, I really have no idea what was there. So there's, there's two, so there's gotta be something that was there.